What is up? Welcome back, everyone. We started with over 100 players yesterday competing in pods. Today, we are down to our top 32, and now we are down to just two players here in the finals. Incredibly excited. How are you feeling, D-Money? This is amazing. You can hear the crowd going wild. Maybe. Is that, is that <laughs> us? I don't know. Everybody is like... The crowd was going crazy on this last match. Such an intense uh, finale of that to get to this finale. So much money on the line. We just got over a hundred more dollars in donations. Thank you, chat. So the prize pool is getting even bigger and more intensified for these players here that worked so hard to get here, as you said. Uh, it's been such a journey. So many great players playing a lot of great decks uh, to get to this point. You see the bracket right there. Uh, there's some really big names in there, like D-Money. Like, <laughs> wow. Incredible competition. Lots of different things, you know, bringing down to just two amazing players here. Let's let's pull up our first deck and do a do a quick talk about the deck. We'll introduce the players and then we'll do what everyone wants to do and go and show some amazing gameplay with Rocco Sako with this just disgusting Leech She Hulk <laughs> Hulk deck that has been dominating people. Just an absolutely suffocating deck. Uh, and then we could jump over to W, who has a very uh, innovative and new idea with this kind of like wave claw, uh, high evolutionary, super, super awesome matchup here. Yeah, I mean, I wonder how this is really going to play out. I mean, extending the game helps W a little bit. Maybe it benefits Rocco more. He could also do the juke out with the Legion. Uh, a lot of different ways this could play out. But, yeah, really exciting stuff here. And we're just going to jump right into the match here. This is the final match. Can we get the crowd going crazy for Let's this? Let's hear for the these two amazing players, everyone. Oh, baby. And we see the double one drop here. Uh, we see the Nebula come down. We see the Misty Knight, both very powerful cards to start the game. Uh, we see the follow-up here. Both players running uh, a couple a couple good one drops. I'm interested in your thoughts about this because when I see Space Throne turn one and I see Nebula, yeah. I love dropping the Nebula and the Space Throne and just letting it sit there, get bigger and bigger, especially in these situations where you know your opponent doesn't have Killmonger and saying, hey, eventually you're going to have to beat this or maybe you don't and maybe you give up and I'm going to pay one energy to win an entire lane. Sign me up. Yeah, I mean, they both do have Hulk in their deck, though, with the high Evo, so they could be potentially saving that for that location. That seems like a, a good card to put there, but at the same time, you would be forcing your opponent to uh, drop that Hulk there. So uh, it does have a merit. Both sides, I think, I think could be uh, pretty reasonable here. We see the Jeff come down on the Stark Tower. That's a great place for him. We see the Cyclops is going crazy. This is pew, pew, pew. A, a lot of similar cards on the board here. And I, I think it's so interesting. I think that... Um when you, when you're looking at something like Space Throne and like the uh, the the plus and minus of it, yeah, it's going to be interesting. I I tell you what, I am not envious of these players being in a high evolutionary Hulk matchup because yeah. there's so much that you just don't know what is happening if your opponent is charging a Hulk in their hand and you you're looking at your Hulk, you think it's really big. Maybe your opponent had you know, one extra turn of float that, that they're going to get out ahead. So uh, it's going to be really, really interesting to see how both these players kind of balance uh, their ideas. of okay, and, and W oh, pulling Jeff okay. off, of, uh, off of the Stark Tower before it goes interesting. off. Very interesting choice. Yeah, we see the Jeff come down for Rocco as well. Yeah, as you were saying, yes, these Hulks are getting very large. But yeah, you have to keep track of how many times your opponent floats energy. And then you never really even know because... The way that Hulk works now is that he only gets buffed when he's in your hand or on the board. So uh, you never really know exactly what your opponent's Hulk is at because you don't know when they drew it. But you can have a kind of an idea. And I mean, 20 power is a little hard to beat. We have a, we have a lot of things to consider here on this final turn. Uh, Rocco has access to his Jeff, able to move it for power. Uh, if it goes down over in the middle, he's still going to need a little bit of support unless he gets super, super lucky with the Misty Knight. Um, but... Really interesting. I think both players are probably really uncomfortable with their position right here. Do I just slam my giant Hulk left like we talked about? Uh, am I trying to find some other path to, to win two lanes? Uh, or are we both going to retreat later? Which yeah. I could see. I, I mean, I don't know. I'd, I'd be retreating probably if I'm on both sides of this. Yeah, very tough spot. You got to do a lot of math here with all the different options. I mean, the middle lane, that is looking pretty good for W. He is ahead. If Jeff moves over there, it's going to be only two power, but then you have the Misty Knight possibility. Um, 
Yeah, I don't... Yeah, both spots are looking very awkward, and I could totally see a double retreat coming. I mean, they've basically done almost yeah. the same play throughout the, the game here. Jeff left hook right is interesting. Ooh, okay. okay. Rocco Sacco is the one who said, hey, wow. we're going to we're gonna go over this for two. W gets a little bit confused and pulls away, winning the first match here. I was thinking maybe there's some weird Legion lines where you, you play the Legion middle and you pull the Jeff off and then you, yeah, that was you a, try and get the advantage there. But, man, what, a, what an interesting first round. I, yeah, I think we're like in for a, a crazy finals. That looked like a strange play from Rocco Sacco, but sometimes all you have to do is press that end turn button and you get the W. And... Uh, W is down one Q. Oh, and another Nexus game, especially with Legion looming. These Nexus games can be great. Two insane Legion locations. Mojo World can be backbreaking if, like, maybe your opponent just has three little cards and you have a Hulk on one location. Legion comes down on Mojo World, and hey, what are you gonna do? You know, I'm I'm, I'm by a, up by a hundred power there. Uh, really, really interesting for either of these locations to to potentially get hit by Legion here. But let's see what they do with the magic. Yeah, I mean, the magic just adds complexity to the game here and then also just makes Legion even more of a threat. Gives you so many different options. Yeah, you literally could do it on like any single lane here. Um, I then, truly yeah. think he's doing that because he likes the, the prospect of Legion both of those other locations and knows that it can give him the advantage. That's why Legion's such a powerful card is because, you know, your opponent has to deal with all these possibilities with Legion or you simply not doing it. Exactly, and he did already have the... Uh, he already did have a pretty good start with the two one drops, not seeing his opponent play any card. I'm surprised we didn't really see a snap there to take advantage. But like we were saying before, like Binks was saying, uh, these players have been playing pretty passively at the beginning of the game, so just getting a feel for how the other person plays, even though they've seen each other play against other people, they haven't actually played against them themselves. And yeah, I'm just gonna scout out. Neither player actually playing for the Nexus, which is something you don't usually see. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's just sitting there at zero power. What, a, what an interesting thing there. Now, here's here's the big factor in this matchup. I, th I think that the the, the two things that, uh, that we have to think about here, I think that the leech is going to be incredibly important to oh, shut yeah. off the additional power uh, uh, that's that's uh, available there with the Hulk. Actually, the, the yeah. Hulk maintains its power. It's very, it's very interesting. Yeah, the damage is already done. And the Hulk is still looking quite large. I mean, I I think I think if Rocco wants to, he has a very big winning. Oh, he's going away from it. I think that slamming the Hulk left into the Legion middle is nearly unbeatable. I guess the Jeff is there and can still move, so maybe he didn't like the prospect there. But he's just going for his full float strategy, saying, "Hey, in this final turn, I'm going to go into She Hulk and Hulk, and just really hope that our the opponent didn't top deck the wave uh, because the." The, the wave is something that's really scary against this this float strategy unless you do get the Legion out there to hopefully shut it off. Yeah, I mean, Legion was actually somewhat of an option there on the Mojo World. It could have been pretty risky, but uh, maybe would have actually won the game here. Going for the float, uh, yeah, going for the float, getting that extra power on the Sunspot, making it more awkward here. Could go for a dicey play with the Legion still. Has a lot of options to work with. Uh, this is a tough spot for them. It's a tough spot for the casters as well. We have no idea what the heck is going to happen. They're going to make us do math here. Oh. Yeah, I really, th I'm really surprised they didn't go with, with this Hulk line. Okay, he's going with the Mojo yeah, World line, yeah. uh, turning off the Nexus, and then hoping that two cards don't get played over on the right. Maybe he's hoping that the Jeff gets pulled off of the Mojo Exactly. World? I don't think this is enough here. Yeah, yeah, the whole coming down well, mid. Well, we, we, were, we were counting 15 extra power left. Very well played because of the oh, Nexus getting shut off. Yes, that's the true. The additional power the coming left is gone. Rocco Sacco finds a great Rocco way to knows. finish out the game. Rocco knows what he's doing. All right, the Nexus was throwing me off. I'm looking at the numbers on the left, and I'm like, what? He's so far ahead here. You don't have to explain yourself, dude. It's Man. fine. <laughs> Being a caster is tough. All right. What, what a great play. Like we said, I mean, you, you look at those first two locations and the, the possibility of Legion, like, from W side is so, so difficult to, to try and play around all these different permutations of how Rocco uh, uh, can deal with this. Um, and interesting, you know, down down 7 to 10, but we've seen earlier in the tournament W come back from some huge deficit. So I think that these early games uh, aren't it's huge of a factor, but always nice to have a comfortable lead. Yeah, neither player with a one cost. Um, a little slower of a game here, but yeah, Sunspot coming down, really nice. Gets to play off curve as well. That's the means interesting. You obviously have some very scary implications again with the Legion to, to potentially come down and just Ooh. shut down the game. Ooh, uh, we have the Raft over here on the right, which is uh, always something that people are going to be uh, fighting over. 
Uh, yeah, your typical person, but not Rocco. Rocco might be thinking here, hey, I don't think that my opponent can get to the raft yeah. uh, by turn six, and I don't think they're going to even try. Uh, I mean, so base, we'll yeah, he's basically basing it off those uh, those first few turns, realizing that he, his opponent probably has a higher curve hand, kind of like him. So just going to really go with a different kind of strategy here. Going to float some energy for the Sunspot. Give himself a couple more options for next turn with the She-Hulk if he wants it. Yeah, very interesting pass here because Ooh. you'd think on five, Rocco would be thinking Leech, but I think he's trying to do a She-Hulk, maybe She-Hulk armor oh, to I try, think, and, oh, try oh. and fight for the raft. Maybe he's going, oh, oh, I think I see. Um, mm. Yeah, I figured he could go for something with this Death main, but the, the armor... Okay, he, this is such an interesting idea. So he's t using Legion. He's going to kill off the Legion. Uh -huh. Now the only place that can be played is on is on the right because he's going to be throwing priority by doing this. And then he has access to the armor to beat out the Jeff middle. Wow, this is a very interesting Legion play here. And unless they get something crazy with the uh, with with the Raft card, if if that is the the route that W tries to go. Um, but oh. if a wave coming down here too is pretty rough, but how do you play wave and then still want to get the raft card? Um, wow. Snap yeah. coming down from Rocco. He's very confident in this play, and I think it's going to be incredibly hard to beat. This is a really interesting line here. I mean, if Claw was come down on the left side, it could be a little bit the, of a disaster. The wave is, is okay. so smart yeah, because that actually, now he, oh, no. just armor isn't going to be enough. Yeah, now he can make that next level play that he was setting up. We see the, well, we see the snap, I believe. Yeah, no way for Rocco to be able to win middle yeah. here. He's going to have to contest right, and I don't think he has any way of doing it. Uh, expecting W to go for that raft play, but instead just sitting back saying, hey, I have wave in my deck. I, I have an idea of what you're going to do. You got me with Legion last time. I'm not going to let you get me with Legion this time. Yeah. And w is going to take it here. Getting it down okay. eight to seven. Yeah, I was a little surprised. I mean, it was a cool... It was a cool play by Rocco. It was a cool setup. I didn't really think about that. Um, but I also, we could have seen the, the armor come down with the She-Hulk to take priority for that final turn and then go in for the Legion play. But then the armor on the right was a little confusing, but I, I think he would have had it with that line. But then then your opponent could play in the middle. There's so many factors to work with with this Legion with the, oh man. You get a nice little starting oh. point with the dual sunspots dropping down. One of them unfortunately lands in Jotunheim, which is not a good spot to be. Let's see if W is going to make him pay to continue playing here in this game. It looks like it's going to let it pass. Yeah, W coming out with the, uh, the Spider-Man point there. Really going for the mental game. <laughs> All right, Crimson Cosmo is over on the right side, Ooh. already securing yeah. two one-drops there. It's huge. Going to stop that Cyclops from coming down over there, which is really big. Protects yeah, that Nebula is going to yeah. grow. Lots of great things coming from there, and, and we Still have to no see snap. a full pass. Still no snap at this point. Surprised to see him playing a little scared here, especially with that Hulk in the hand that's growing. Some weak plays coming out from Ooh. Rocco. It never you feels good to, to play high, high evolution in any hand, does it? You know, just a 4-4, four, four, but he's getting 4-6 of value turning off the Nebula, so it's probably just worth it here. Probably working towards a leech over on the right, hoping that that's going to be enough to, uh, to be able to sneak over the top, but... I don't know, there's not as many leech targets here in, in W side as there as, the, as there was in many of the other games that we saw. Yeah, I mean, now we see the snap come out. Insta retreat. That's what Rocco was waiting for. Oh, Rocco, Rocco had his hand yeah. hovering over that snap button. And and here we are going yeah, into yeah. the going into the high stakes round. We are sitting 7-7. Seven, seven, a dead even game here going into the higher stakes. Let's see what the first location is. Okay, yeah, W was playing it pretty passively. That's what, That's been his strategy, you know, just take it slow. And then once it gets to the high stakes rounds, that's when he starts to pour it on. He comes alive in the fourth quarter. And uh, yeah, it's very close. Both players sitting on the same amount of cubes. Effectively four lives here for each. Oh, the Sunspot coming down there with the pass. That's a that's a big advantage for Rocco right great, now. Great great spot to be in. You love when your sunspot's there when both both players essentially forced to pass. Uh, sacred timeline, basically a ruins in, in, in most games, but I don't know, maybe I'll be wrong here. Maybe he'll fill it and, and do something crazy. I mean, they're gonna make us remember the starting hand here. Um, 
Yeah, I don't think it'll really benefit. I, I don't think you would get another She-Hulk. That would have been interesting. Well, I'm, I'm really interested in the, in the choice of Cyclops here above the She-Hulk. I felt like that Misty Knight was aimed to do that and not to win the magic. Doesn't really want to extend the game here. Uh, just Still, maybe yeah. wanted to continue floating that one energy to charge this Hulk, knowing that it's going to be staring right down. And the Sacred Timeline is going to come into play here. Oh my gosh. I think he'll get another Hulk. But I don't think it's actually going to be buffed up. I think they fi I think they changed that. I'm very interested to see how this turns out. Uh, w facing down a snap here, which is really, really, really scary. Again, you know, retreating for yeah. one cube is really easy. Retreating for two cubes feels a lot worse. You know, that's 20% of your, your total health going away. Uh, oh, and he's going to stick it through. It. Yeah, he's got that huge Hulk in his hand. He's feeling okay, even though his opponent has that right side locked down. I mean, I guess he thinks he can win the other two lanes. Wave gonna come down. Not really gonna do too much since there's another turn here. W's gotta feel bad here. I mean, one of the best counters to wave on five is magic on five, saying, all right, I'll only play one card this yep. next turn, or I'll pass this whole next turn. Uh, but, uh, you know, after that, we're, we're going to be moving forward. And again, you know, we've been seeing this both from W in the, the, the last series and Rocco here. Stacking that lane with all these cards that can charge is something that I really never do. And uh, maybe seeing these two guys, uh, you know, both these, these players here in the finals, maybe that's something I have to start uh, thinking about a little bit more because it seems to be incredibly effective. Yeah, exactly. Just stack that one lane. Keep letting that, if you got that Hulk, especially if you have the Hulk in the hand that's growing, uh, because that'll win you that other lane. There's no Shang-Chi in the other deck. Both players know that. Uh, so now W is in a rough spot here. Uh, could potentially play the Hulk on the right side, I guess, if he wants like to try to contest that. He knows what play is coming next turn. Um, it's just, it might come down to a 50-50. We'll see how he, he navigates this turn here. You know what's terrifying? Looking at W's hand here, he's going to have a 20 Four power Hulk to yeah. play in the final turn. Now it's gonna get up to twenty-four on the right with the the sunspot and the misty night uh, all interacting over there. Uh, maybe Rocco Sako is gonna have to float, but maybe Rocco Sako will say, "I have all this energy power over on the right. Twenty-four power is insane. Uh, they're the whole. They're never gonna be able to get out ahead." Exactly. It's gonna be really scary. But We're gonna see cool. see how he manages the energy here. Twenty-five. Yeah, I mean, at the same time, Rocco is only two power behind on his Hulk. Just going to stack it. He insta locked that, in, lock that in. Very confident in this play. Wow, loving the, the huge power coming out. But, I mean, it looks like W is going to be able to win over on the right side because he had a Hulk and he also had uh, a, a Nebula does coming he? out. No, I mean, he's going to float one on the Sunspot. The Cyclops is going to activate as well because I believe he's floating one here. Wait, right? What was the second card he played? Oh, it was a Vibranium. So oh, he's, oh. He would push out 28 If he over stacks on the right. that all on the right, moves the Jeff. The Sunspot will go up one. He'd have to move the Jeff as He'd well, I believe. He'd have to move the Jeff as well. He'd have to find that line. But if he can but then move if, the Jeff, he, play everything ooh. right, that is a terrifying amount of power That's to a hard play. the final turn. That's a hard play to make. I mean, currently with the 10 power mid, you're contesting a She-Hulk, so you don't want to move the Jeff. It's gonna take a big play from W. This could be it right here. I mean, this is huge. This is, this is for four Q. This, if, if this game Seven. ends, this is gonna be this is it. four. If they this both is gonna lock be it four in. the tournament here if we both lock it in. He's gotta make the call. Running out of time here. Under a lot of pressure, a lot of money on the line. And I will say, I'm, I, I'm very impressed by Rocco Sacco being cold blooded. He played Hulk, She Hulk, middle. He to end turn. Oh my gosh. <gasps> he didn't move Jeff the, does didn't not move, move the... to the right. I don't think it's going to be enough. Vibranium coming down. I don't think it's going to be enough with the Cyclops. Sunspot going to go up, plus Misty one. Night Misty Knight going Misty to the Knight right. right. Gets him over the top. And Rocco Sacco wins it in an amazing final game. Rocco Sacco is your SnapCon 2023 tournament champion. You got to give it up for W as well. He played such a great game. Got to this point. Wow. Incredible Absolutely stuff Absolutely incredible. We are going to cut to the stage with Felicity. Take it away, Felicity. Congratulations. Congratulations, Rocco Sacco, on winning the snap. Oh, sorry. We're out of, out of focus. <laughs> Congratulations, Rocco Sacco, on winning the SnapCon tournament. How do you feel? Um, just really excited. I was felt pretty good. I thought he was gonna retreat that last game, but 
he had the power to potentially take it and I have to respect that. Yeah, absolutely. That was such a close game. How do you feel about just SnapCon overall and the tournament overall? I mean, it took you, you had to play so many games to get to this moment. Yeah, obviously the structure this time was great with the pause system where you just do eight man cells. That way you can just play as you need to, relax. I actually played a couple of them this morning before the actual tournament, so I probably played three to four more games than most people in the tournament today. And obviously the structure was great, the calm was great. I can't wait for next year, honestly. Can we give a shout out to Lizzie for such a great job she did? <laughs> yep. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, we've, got, we've got a little trophy for you, a little trophy. No, I'm just, I'm just playing, hang on. <laughs> There we go, the real trophy, SnapCon 2023. Again, uh, congrats to both you guys. Big prize pool for all the top four here. Again, even the third and fourth place doing really, really good. Uh, so again, congrats again, man. Congratulations. So for the prize pool, we have 50% of the prize pool is going to our winner. And then the runner up is gonna be getting 25% of that prize pool. Very well done, W. <laughs> All right. So, so W, I know this one. This one was a rough one. Uh, I know the, the matchup itself was rough. I, I saw you back here on all your different matches. You were writing down cards, you were circling cards, which ones were gonna be tough, you know, to beat in every single one of your matchups. I know this one had a lot of just cards that were unpredictable as well as just difficult, but wanna just check in with you, man. How you feeling? Second place, there's still a lot of money you got in this feature match. I know you gave up another tournament just to be here which is amazing again appreciate you for that man so how you feeling how you doing man uh good i uh i'm not super proud of my play but at the same time i'm not sure you, you were amazing you deserve it like that was awesome and i then we're both on the same wavelength here of the high e stuff that's pretty great that's you did great i don't know i want to give you all the credit here this that was awesome Yeah, that was some very incredible gameplay. The audience loved watching all of those games. Um, we're wondering what is the most, what was the most challenging part of just, you know, whether it's choosing decks or the strategies that were implemented, um, or maybe it was the stress of being on stage. Um, what would you guys each say is the stress, the most challenging part of the tournament? Um, I'd probably say the most challenging is just being in the games themselves or in a bad matchup. So in the top eight of going against the Dark Hawk deck, I felt like if they could just get the power out against me, it'd be a really tough time. Just having the confidence, knowing your matchups, knowing where your strengths are and weaknesses are, and then just playing to your lanes. Uh, for me, it's like, you know, just staying composed. I felt I got a little uncomposed in that one. and. You know, that's something you, you work on on your own time, but uh, it, it was a long, grueling weekend. So that's, you know, that it all, these land events, you know, you play on your computer and you get to like go to your room after. There, there's, there's a lot to this that makes it a little more mentally taxing. So, you know, but I'm, I'm, I'm happy uh, and this is great. Thank you again, Felicity. This has been a great event. Absolutely. Yeah. and. You know, one of the things, one of the things you kind of mentioned, W, is, is being in person, right? So we're all used to being at home, playing Snap on our computers, you know, you're not looking the other person in the, in the eye. I mean, again, I know we're here on stage split here, but if you guys saw the tournament area back there, I mean, these guys are facing each other, sitting at a table. Uh, we heard a lot of trash talking and or just joking about what somebody was or wasn't going to play. Uh, which just made it a lot of fun, which has been what I love personally about SnapCon. Uh, these types of events of just getting together with everybody. I know we're going to be having some fun uh, even outside of the con and stuff like that. So again, want to thank all of you guys as well. Want to thank you guys for putting on the show, keeping everybody entertained on the chat, on the stream here in person. So again, congrats, uh, you know, top four. Very, very awesome thing, guys.
Yep. Very nicely done to all of our players. Thank you all for participating. I know that you have all played so many games and um, congrats to all of you. Um, I, I know that a lot of people have been thanking me this weekend, but it's I could not have just made this happen at all just by myself, but the, the entire so team too. has worked so, so hard and it's, I mean, I feel like I had the easier job to tell you the truth, but um, I do want to call out the different people that have been helping. TC has been, I mean, he's yeah. worked so hard. Dude. Dude. You want to come up? You guys. You guys, you guys have no idea when we were, you know, going through this for the last, you know, couple months getting it together. Um, TC has been putting everything together. I talked to him as we were coming out here saying, are you ready? And he's like, yes, I have my checklist. It says plug wire one into port two, <laughs> do this. And th this man was amazing. You guys, the setup over here, just perfect, flawless. I know, of course, it's a con. There's things that happen just like when we're streaming at home, but to, it, it was great. It was great. So again, appreciate you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you everyone for coming by and thank you all for the kind words. Yeah. It's been great to produce this event and you know, I hope we get to produce some more for you guys. So I look forward to it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, TC. Yeah, and we, have, we have a few others we want to thank. I know you got a couple people that have been helping on this side a lot. Yep, absolutely. Um, both Arctic Fox and Teffy. I mean, you guys have interacted with them. They've been working so hard, and uh, we couldn't have survived without them. <laughs> and also Munchie Dog as well, who didn't even know he was going to be helping out <laughs> before this event. The, the beautiful, <laughs> the beautiful lighting, all of the stuff, the pictures, yeah. just amazing. All of this amazing. lighting, he didn't even know about at all. He came <laughs> up with it on the fly. So. Very yeah. well done. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, I want to give a big shout out to, again, we had guests. We had Brad, uh, Brad Sefer back there helping uh, in the other stream, the other area in the tournament. So, again, big shout out to you guys for helping me keep all that down. Uh, big shout out for Coop back there. Cooper helping us from Rally Cry, running these tournaments. Again, so many pods, so many matches. He kept track of everything, helping us make sure we had our top 32. And again, big shout out to all you guys who helped with the casting. So many amazing casters coming through, whether it was the mainstream, the other stream, all throughout. So again, appreciate all you guys for everything you were doing. Uh, you know, it's awesome. Yeah. And of course, thank you to our wonderful sponsors who have helped make this happen, their support, you know, our featured sponsor, Team Impulse. We cannot thank you guys enough. Um, you guys are the best, really. <laughs> the amount of support that you have given us um, just has been so tremendous and you guys are just so passionate about the game and you know you just want I know that you two are gonna do great things because you've got so many tournaments coming up and you just want to do great things for the community so thank you so much team impulse Absolutely. <laughs> so again want to thank want to thank all of the contestants all the players that were playing in the tournament again big thanks to you two guys uh, again congrats finals taking it down lots of uh, cash prizes third and fourth place as well so again appreciate you guys so much for doing it yeah. all right yeah so <laughs> And feel free to join the audience if you would like, and then we will get you guys your prize money after this. Yep. <laughs> so I think we had, what, some raffles and some other things we're going to be doing as we're yep. kind of closing out everything and having some fun. So yep. uh, I know we've so got we've some got... sponsor items. You may yep. go grab those for you. Yes, please. Right. So one of them is from Advanced GG. Oh, it's right here, actually. Yep. That one right there. We are going to be drawing three raffle tickets from this box because Advanced GG is giving us tw tw uh, three $25 gift cards. <laughs> All right. I will do the honors of the first one. So if you have your raffle tickets, get them out 
because the first number is 252363. 252363. Anyone? Anyone? Checking the tickets. I know some, some people once. some people have multiple tickets. 252363. Two, Going All once. Right. Going twice. All right. Well, gonna go to the I next guess one. Nobody. All right. Would you like to do the honors of this sure, next one? Sure. Maybe maybe we'll get a winner this time. <laughs> let's see. Let's see. Maybe you have the magic touch. All right. Let's see. Two five two, three, five, four. We got oh! one. <laughs> Binks Congratulations, with the win. Binks. I don't right. actually have a physical card for you. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Congratulations. Um, two five two three six three. Yes, it yes, is. Yes, it was. So oh, we did have a winner off of that one. Well, there, there's three. There's three Binks. So we're good. We're well, good. Well, if you right? if you would, you can come up if you want a high five. But that's all I can offer. <laughs> For now, you'll you'll get it. Don't worry. Don't worry. All, all right. right. Oh, and last. We got one more. One more. You want to do All it? All right, let's see. All right. All right. Last one here. Two, five, two, three, six, zero. We got it? Oh, we got oh, it. We got it, JJ. JJ Roll. Nice. All right. All right. Um, maybe Neil and Snap King? Yes. We will do the one from Snap King, which is a $50 gift card to snapking.com. All right. Maybe All right. we can have someone from the audience pull this one. All right. Anybody from the audience want to come pull pull a number? Anyone have the magic touch? All right. Again, again, wanna... these raffle tickets came from people participating in events, doing different side things all throughout the weekend, as well as getting their free ticket just for getting their SnapCon tickets. This one is two five two one two six. D money. D -money. <laughs> Congratulations, D money. In that snap, snap king <laughs> merchandise. Give you a high five. <laughs> we got prizes, I promise. Well, yeah. I got. We'll, we'll take care of you. Don't worry. We'll get you the prize afterwards. I'll get, I'll get you the tiny trophy. Don't worry. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think that is it for the raffle prizes for now. We'll do the other ones. At, I just did, Yeah, we just did the ones for advance. Yep. <laughs> yep. So we will do the other raffle prizes afterwards, but we are going to be wrapping up the stream except for oh, we got, one we, more these are thing. Jokes. Is, these are jokes? Yeah, these are the okay. winning Marvel Snap jokes that we have. All right. All right. So the first one is, why did Iron Man bring a camera to SnapCon? To capture... Anybody? to capture the snap shot of the century. Oh, got it, that got it. One, that was Bones 88 from Bones Again, 88 congrats, back there. Congrats. <laughs> All right. All right, we got it. We got another one here. We got another one here. What do you call a powerless Spider-Man who still jumps from building to building? What? All right, we got... Peter Parkour. Peter Parkour. <laughs> got it, got it. And that That's is Miss Coins did that one. <laughs> All right, and the last one is my win rate, Tammy. But um <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Well, we are wrapping this up, but we're going to pan over to the crowd on this side. So if everybody would like to scoot over to that side, we're going to get a shot of the whole entire crowd, everyone who is here at SnapCon, so that we can wave. Yeah. 
We're moving on over. We're getting into the shot. And Are we in it? All right, make some noise, guys. And TC is going to join us as well. Thank you to all of the viewers. Oh, thank you to all of the viewers at home yes. watching. This has been an incredible event. Thank you, everyone, for Absolutely. coming out. It has been awesome. <laughs> everyone, snap. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> again, thanks for everybody for coming out. I mean, again, yeah. beautiful faces here, tons of people, a really, really fun weekend. So, again, appreciate all you guys. Yeah, thank you guys so, so much. And thank you guys for being such a lovely and nice and friendly and supportive community in general. I'm super proud of being part of it. So, thank yeah, you guys very absolutely. much. Absolutely. <laughs> From everyone at SnapCon, have a good night. See you next year. Woo!